earnest money deposit. What is it? How much do I need to pay? When do I need to pay it? All of these questions plus more coming right up. Hey everybody, my name is Stacy Hesser and look out, I've had three cups of coffee today. I'm on fire and I'm here for you, baby. And today we're gonna to be talking about earnest money deposits and the many questions that I actually get answered, that's totally wrong. The many questions that I get asked, oh God. When I'm working with my buyers, this topic always comes up. What's earnest money? When do I need to pay it? What can I use? How do I get it to you? So I'm here to talk to you about that today. So let's just get right into it. So first off, what is the definition of earnest money and what does it, what does earnest money mean? Earnest money is what we call consideration and it is a requirement in the state of Oklahoma and it is actually part of our contract. There's a little blank in there where you specify who it is that you are going to give the earnest money to and how much it's going to be. The amount of earnest money that you give uh, is really based on your level of comfort in what you're wanting to give as consideration to purchase that house. The more earnest money you give, the more, I hate to use the word clout, but the, the more serious your offer is going to be taken by the seller. When working with my buyers, I really do prefer for them to put down usually right around 1%. So on a $100,000 house, that would be $1,000. Um, but we have had instances where we've gone to $500 also. Um, again, it's just a way for the seller to know that you're putting up some money up front to hold the house and show the seriousness of your offer. Next, do you get earnest money back and what happens to my earnest money at closing? We've already given up the earnest money. We are wondering what's going to happen with it, <laughs> right? Do I ever see this money again? Yes, you do. When you go to closing uh, at the title company, you will actually get what's called a settlement statement and you'll see a credit on there. You'll see a line of uh, debits and a line of credits and you'll actually see your earnest money listed in that line of credits. It will actually go towards the purchase price of your house and you'll see it indicated on there. Now, that said, if you happen to be working a deal where the seller is going to be covering all of your closing costs and you happen to have a loan that requires zero down, that's right, you can get a zero down loan, there are actually instances where you may, as a buyer, get your earnest money refunded back to you at closing. Always options out there. It's pretty amazing when you shop around and ask questions. Next question is earnest money refundable. This one's a little bit tricky, but let's say you don't make it to the close table. Let's say something goes a little bit astray with your deal and you're wondering whether or not you can get your earnest money back. I do have another video out there called, when is it too late to back out of a contract? Link here, or my, I don't know, here, here, here. Just check for something like popping up. <laughs> anyway, but two very clear instances defined in the contract for the buyer at least, if you're going through that inspection period and you're within those timelines, then you will get your, your earnest money back. If you're not able to qualify for financing, you're also able to get your earnest money back. But there are very specific timelines that are involved in those. Uh, so be sure to check your contract, check with an attorney, check with your realtor. It's all clearly defined in there and I think you'll find all of that very useful. When is earnest money due and what can I use to pay earnest money? So earnest money is due within three banking days of both the buyer and the seller agreeing upon the terms of the contract. So once we have that executed contract, we have a date that both parties came into an agreement on, the earnest money would need to be turned in within three banking days after that. I specify banking days because man, we talk about bankers hours and all of those lovely little holidays that they get. So you gotta make sure that the bank is open and you have three banking days to be able to get that earnest money turned in. What can you use for earnest money? So a lot of people think that you have to have certified funds. That is not the case. You can actually just write a personal check 
Uh, you can turn in money orders for earnest money. You can do certified funds. You can even wire it. If you're out of state, I would get wiring instructions very specific for that purpose and send those wiring instructions to you. No cash, no cash, just saying, no cash. <laughs> So those are my most common questions. If you have more, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I always love to hear from you guys and I'll, I always check them. So if you do have additional questions, I'll be sure to answer them there. Otherwise, all of my contact information again is in the description of this video. Feel free to call me, text me, email me, whatever. I'd love to hear. If you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see this happy, smiling little face every single week, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I love you guys for it. Every single one of you. Thank you so much for all you do for me. Keep commenting away. Until the next time.